All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over a method of solving quadratic equations called completing the square. So, so far in our notes from notes number 22, we went over solving by using the square root method, we did factoring, and then we solved using the quadratic formula. So this one, completing the square, is actually one that I would encourage you to try doing when you find a trinomial that is not factorable, but you'll notice that the coefficient in front of your squared term, usually x squared, is one, all right? And if that's true, then I look at the number in front of x and I analyze that number to decide if I really want to do completing the square. In essence, this kind of continues what I've been telling you in class, that I try to um, hold off on using the, the quadratic formula unless it's kind of like, all right, I've tried all my options, all right, finally, I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. Again, you can use the quadratic formula, but it's just the most clunky and the most um, kind of longest process, I would say, out of all of them. All right, so this page just kind of showing you the difference between uh, one on the left, you have a quadratic trinomial, which we will factor. So using our factoring method of a times c that adds to b, we have one times 16 is 16, b is eight. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 16 and add to eight, and that would be four and four. So this is actually what is called a perfect square trinomial. All right, so you can write this as x plus four squared. Setting this equal to zero, I only need to set x plus four equal to zero to find x equals negative four, right? This is a double root, it only has one answer. Let's look at the other one. All right, this one is already ready to go. I can go ahead and use my square root method right now, take the square root of both sides to write x plus four equals plus or minus zero. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the plus or minus because uh, zero is neutral, so it's not gonna be positive or negative. So I have x plus four equals zero, so x equals negative four. So I would say to answer this question, which one is easier? Uh, probably the one on the right, because it's already, at this point, it's already been factored, if you will. Okay, so save us a little time. Look at this next one. Let's try to factor this trinomial on the left. So I have a times c, that adds to b. So one times negative 10, which is negative 10, and b is eight. So I need factors of negative 10 that add to eight. And I'm not coming up with any. 10 and negative one, negative 10 and positive one, that's gonna give me nine and negative nine, so not gonna work there. Five and two will give me the three or seven. So I don't think this is factorable. So this is not factorable. All right, so at this point, if you wanted to solve this, um, you only know the quadratic formula as a way to solve these when they're not factorable. But this is a perfect candidate for one that I would solve without using the quadratic formula. I would use completing the square. Now this one on the right is almost good to go, but there's this minus 26. I'm gonna move over with adding 26. So I have x plus four, all of that squared, equals 26. Then I'm gonna take the square root of both sides to get x plus four equals plus or minus the square root of 26. Thinking about the number 26, I got factors of 13 and two, but neither of those are perfect squares and neither of those can continue to be factored. So that's actually simplified. So to finish this, I'm gonna move that four over with subtraction. So my answer is x equals negative four plus or minus the square root of 26, all right? So now let me show you how essentially I would solve this one here using completing the square. All right. So the first thing you have to have is it must be in standard form. AX squared plus BX plus C and equal to zero. All right. Now, first step when you do this, right, because we just tried this one on the previous page, it was not factorable. So essentially, I need to manipulate this equation. So what I'm gonna do in step one is I'm gonna move the constant to the other side. So I'm gonna write x squared plus eight x minus 10 equals zero, and I'm going to add 10 to both sides. So now I have x squared plus eight x, go ahead and leave a little space, plus 10. So this step, I move the constant to the other side of the equation. All right, now after that, then I'm going to essentially create a new constant, which is why I left that space there. The way you create the new constant 
is by doing something called b over 2 squared. So my b, right, based off of this standard form here, my b is the number in front of x, which is 8. So I'm going to do 8 over 2 and square that. So that's going to give me 4 squared, which is 16. So I'm going to add that 16 in that space. Now, when you do that to an equation, you have to do that also to the other side. So I have to add that 16 to the other side as well. So find b over 2 squared and add it to both sides. Okay, then once you do that, for step three, I am going to combine like terms and just leave the left side alone. All right, so that's going to be 26. So I'm going to combine like terms on one side of the equation. Okay. At this point, the goal here is to create what is called a perfect square trinomial, which we kind of looked at on the first page, right? So the idea is that this right here, right, we chose this, so that way it is now factorable, okay? So every time you do completing the square, you are getting a perfect square trinomial on one side of the equation. So we're gonna factor the perfect square trinomial. Now, I know when you think factor, you're thinking, let's make our factoring tool, right? That little x to do a times c that adds to b. But you don't have to do that for this, right? You did this on purpose because it will always factor as x plus or minus, again, depending on the sign, b over 2, all right? And all of that has to be squared because it's a perfect square trinomial. So to factor this, I'm going to do x, my b over 2, go back up here. My b over 2 is in the parentheses, which gave me 4. And look at the sign in front of that 8x. So it's going to be x plus 4 squared. And again, if you need to do it in your head, you can go ahead and expand that. And you would get x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 26. All right, and the last step is to solve using the square root method like we practiced on the previous notes. Okay, so I'm going to copy it down. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, which will give me x plus 4 equals plus or minus, oops, I forgot my square root, the square root of 26. And again, like I said up there, 26 cannot be simplified. So I have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 26. So this is how I'm going to leave the answer. All right, and that is completing the square. So again, it's kind of like a very niche thing that we're doing. All right, but it's gonna help us in uh, the next notes. And again, I would rather do this than use the quadratic formula. So I'm gonna encourage you when kind of everything looks nice to do that. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. All right, let's do one more together, part A. All right, so the idea is if I saw this, I would try to factor, right? Because I'm always trying to factor. I know it says to complete the square, but the idea is, is I would try if I had my own choice. So one times negative 4 is negative 4. B is 8, so factors of negative 4 that add to 8. My only factors of negative 4 are negative 4 and 1, uh, 4 and negative 1, or 2 and negative 2. None of those are going to add to 8. So this is not factorable. So that leads me to completing the square. All right. So the first thing I look at is, is there a 1 in front of the square term? And there is. The next thing I do is I analyze the number in front of my x term, in this case a. If that number is even, I'm going to do completing the square. If that number is odd, like you'll notice down here, I am not going to complete the square, right? Because when you do b over 2 with an odd number, it's not going to reduce nicely. Now, you can absolutely do letter b with uh, fractions, and I will show you, not in this video, but if you check out my key, I will show you the work for that. But I would, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the quadratic formula because I don't want to deal with fractions. I have nothing against fractions, but I can do the quadratic formula faster because I don't have to deal with fractions. So let's go back to A. What I'm going to do first, step one, is I'm going to move that minus 4 to the other side, B 
becomes positive 4. Remember, in this spot is where I'm going to put b over 2 squared. So b is positive 8 over 2. That's 4 squared, which is 16. So I'm going to write a squared plus 8a plus 16. Don't forget to also add that 16 to the other side. All right, it's a common mistake. Please, please, please add it to both sides. This always factors as a and then plus or minus, depending on the sign, b over 2, right? So go back to your work. b over 2 was 8 over 2, which is 4. All of that squared equals 20. Take the square root of both sides. I get a plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 20. Now, 20 can be reduced. That can be reduced to square root of 4 times the square root of 5, which is 2 times the square root of 5. So I'm going to write that. Equals plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. So my last step is to move the 4 over. It becomes negative 4 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. And that is completing the square. All right? So check out my uh, key for the work with part B, and don't forget to do the homework. Good luck.